Hey guys, this is Tyler again with AR Puffin Dirt Armor. Today we are in our soft good and packing production bay. We're going to do a frequently asked question video. We're going to pick some of the top questions we get, uh, what you guys are asking us, and hopefully answer a few questions. So we're going to dive right into it. Uh, why is there a production lead time on your armor and what are you doing about it? We have a production lead time. Uh, we are a small business, probably a lot smaller than some of you are thinking. We grew from about two employees when we first started this. Was uh, I'm the founder. My wife and I started this uh, many years ago. We've grown to about 39 team members so far. So we've stepped it up quite a bit to help increase production. But the bottom line is we can only make it so quick well maintaining the quality standards we're known for. We manufacture here in our Phoenix, Arizona facility. We occupy three warehouses, all of production bays and a few storage bays. Um, and that's where we make everything. So quality is extremely important to us. We do not outsource. We maintain our quality control standards here and we make all of our armor start to finish, including some of our nylon goods to include plate carriers. So it takes time for us to do it right. We will always value producing a high quality, proper product over speed. Um, so while we do work on the lead time and we do bring on team members, it does take us time to find the right team member for the job. Uh, a lot of our positions are skilled labor, and when we hunt for people, we want a motivated team member who wants to be here, who wants to put effort into making a quality product, and who shares our same vision, and is also like-minded. So when you're asking about the lead time, know that we are doing things about it, we are growing as a company, and that we're putting all of our resources we can into it to bring you a top quality product while keeping it affordable as quickly as possible. So if that's easily our top number one question is, what about the production lead time and what are you doing about it? Know that we are putting everything we have into getting it taken care of. Why do you have so many test videos and why aren't you shipping my armor instead? The truth behind that is, regardless of us shipping your armor uh, as quickly as we can, which we're doing anyway, we do product quality control testing on all batches we produce. The armor gets tested one way or another. A lot of the time what we're doing is just taking you along for the ride, bringing Ricardo, who's actually filming this right now, our, uh, one of our media team members, to help film these test videos. So we do that as both to show you how we're developing as a business, to show you the patients that go through testing our armor. Um, but a lot of it you don't see. We do a lot more testing behind the scenes from our research and development team to product testing to batch testing. Um, that goes into that. You know, it's a huge effort as a company to make our ballistic products and our variety of lines and tons of, uh, tons of dollars actually get spent on research and development of our product lines. But that, the test videos are not affecting the shipment of your order and uh, they're not related, but they're gonna happen anyway, whether you see them or not, just as part of our quality control process. All right, we are standing here in our armored production bay. You can probably hear there's a lot more going on this bay in terms of uh, raw armor production. This is where everything happens. Um, the third question, what is the difference between your base coat and your buildup on your hard body armor? I'm standing in front of our Graco machine, our Graco sprayer in-house next to our paint booth. This is where we apply our polyurea coating. We have two options of our polyurea coating. Uh, basically, the polyurea coating is a Paxcon, a Linex product. We partner with them to help develop a truly superior small protection coating. We're one of the first companies in the industry to solve the problem of fragmentation of small on steel. Because of this, we have two options. So you can choose, uh, we have a base coat, which is a thinner layer of polyurea coating. It protects it from the elements. Um, and it's a better coating than a nylon small cover, which is what's traditionally used. It does offer a very low level of frag mitigation, uh, but we also offer a build-up coat. The build-up coat offers a nearly full containment based on the threat level for the armor. And what that does is fully encapsulate the round on impact or contain all fragmentation on impact. And that'll prevent fragmentation from hitting your neck and your shoulder and your arm. Um, when inside of a plate carrier, that helps too. But we offer that as an option to give you the choice um, because it does add a little bit more cost and weight. So, and again, that's all sprayed in-house. Uh, we are Linex's OEM applicator for armor in the U.S. One of the only ones that are actually partnered with them for that. So if you see it elsewhere, they're probably not using Paxcon, um, and they're certainly not working with Linex directly on having it coated with you uh, for the body armor. We're going to tie in two for this one. How do you keep your products so affordable, and uh, what do you make your steel uh, products out of? What, what are we using in construction of our steel body armor and what sets us apart? Well, on um, the first question, how do we keep it affordable? Uh, a big portion of the answer is how we purchase. We were able to make very large purchases like this. To do so, that allows us to pass savings on to you. The second part of that equation, that's a simplified answer, but the second part of that equation um, is that we manufacture everything in-house. We're not limited to outsourcing um, and associated costs with that. That's not to say outsourcing is bad by any means. It's, it's a certainly viable solution for a lot of industries. But for us, it allows us to maintain the quality standards we need 
and control the price, um, which is another reason of we, we grow the way we grow as a business and uh, where we are working on the lead time, we do grow at a specific scale to help offset the price. You know, we, we don't want to we don't want to pass extra costs on to you um, unless we absolutely have to. And we've gone about four years now without having any price increases on anything. And that's very important to us. Uh, we want to keep changing the market in the armor industry, creating a more competitive market, um, which in the end, as we bring on, as we compete with other manufacturers, it, it, the result is a better product for you. And we're going to continue staying true to that. But what allows us to keep our costs down is volume purchasing of the material that we do use um, and we move a lot of material and uh, our ability to manufacture everything in-house and offset those uh, costs of outsourcing. So the next question we get a lot is what is your ballistic steel armor made out of? Uh, we post the details on our soft armor, for example our hybrid, our hybrid armor, our 3A soft armor and our Rheimlich which is also made here, um, but our steel body armor. A lot of guys confuse us with using standard abrasion resistant material. That is commonly a material used in the mining industry um, and uh, even farms for wear plate and that sort of thing. Uh, that's a lower grade material and it can work for ballistic applications when it's thick enough and it's also very cost effective. You'll see a lot of guys making armor out of that plate. Um, what we are making armor out of is not that plate. Because we purchase at the volumes we do, we purchase with specific heat treatment uh, specifications per our threat level. For example, our level three body armor has a specific uh, standard for our ballistic steel core. Our level 3 plus armor, same situation. Our 3A steel armor, same situation. And our brand new 3 plus lightweight steel core, uh, same situation. It's a proprietary blend for us based on our purchasing uh, through some mills that we work with. Um, and that's what allows us to achieve industry leading performance that very few people can touch or compete with. Um, and it really helps us set it apart. And when we purchase the volume we do, we can do that and give you a superior product while we'll keeping things affordable instead of offering you just a consumer grade product um, that is available for different industries and repurposing its application. Um, which again, that's not saying that's bad, but that's how we're able to offer a superior product and bring it to the marketplace while still maintaining a competitive price point. Um, and we're proud of that. We're gonna continue leading the steel industry, bringing out new products. Um, a 5.5 pound plate in our new level three plus body armor right now is the lightest steel level three plus plate in the world as far as we know. We're the only ones making it and uh, it's, it's a game changer for the world of steel body armor and we're very excited to have that. And that is just the beginning of what we're developing with our ballistic material. For the next question, what about dragon skin? What about dragon skin? First, let me dive into where we're standing. This is the AR-500 Armor Research and Development Lab. This is a state-of-the-art ballistic testing lab that we've built on site. We do all of our testing here. It's where a lot of our magic happens with product development. Uh, Dragon Skin, uh, that kind of ties into it somehow. Dragon Skin, in theory, was a, I guess for the time, it was many years ago when it was released, and it happened again in Future Weapons, which made it receive a massive amount of exposure. Uh, we get asked this question all the time on Facebook. Um, cool idea, very innovative, very cool name. It's catchy, and it was on TV. Um, in terms of actual performance, there's a reason you don't see it around anymore and in use. It wasn't practical, it had some issues, it didn't pass a lot of test standards, um, but it was still a cool theory, and from everything we've heard, it was a little bit bulky. And they also priced themselves out of the market for, uh, let's be realistic, um, not a lot of guys can afford $3,000 on a set of body armor. So there's that price point that you can easily get out of with technology, and you have to find the right balance. Um, so we get asked that question a lot. Uh, you know, dragon skin relevancy in 2015, honestly, it's probably not a really relevant armor solution. There are a lot of new technologies coming out. We're working on our own in the steel industry, and there's a lot of players uh, doing some really cool things with other technologies. And when you're choosing armor, you just need to choose the right solution within your budget, giving you the best performance for weight, per cost, and then that'll kind of guide you in the right material selection of what you're going for. Um, but we do all of our R&D in-house for our armor, and we're very proud of that. Uh, we take, you know, we, in the steel body armor world, um, it's going to be tough to touch us in terms of how much we put into development of all of our product lines. Another question we get quite often is, why does it take so long to answer my phone call when I call in? Uh, we have about 18 members on phones right now, which is a pretty good amount, and we're constantly training more. Um, know that we are answering all phone calls and emails as quickly as possible, but we honestly, truly do get that many phone calls and emails on a daily basis. Demand for our product has been absolutely humbling over the past few years, and we are tremendously lucky to have an audience and a fan base like you guys uh, helping us support our vision um, of the armor industry, and it obviously it helps us make the changes that uh, we think from your feedback um, 
to bring to the market. That's a lot of what drives our business is listening to feedback from you guys. So a uh, sincere thank you from our family at Air for Hundred Armor two years. Um, and know that we are doing everything we can to answer phone calls and emails as quickly as possible. Um, I know what you probably think when you call in is this is what's happening. But in reality, it's more like this. When we hire new customer service representatives, uh, we make sure to train them. So when you call in, we don't want a monkey answering the phone. You know, we want you to have a first time resolution on the call. Um, so when you call in and you ask a question, our goal is to not put you on hold and have you wait to go get somebody who's knowledgeable in that area. Instead, we'd rather whoever answers the phone to be able to answer your question from start to finish and help with any aspect of your order in question. So because we have that goal, sometimes it takes us a little bit longer to train team members on the phones, um, but we are bringing on people who are passionate about what we do, who share our vision, and to want to participate in our business and grow with us. Um, so we are putting effort into that. And uh, again, we can't say thank you enough for your business. Um, it, it's been it's been truly amazing. It's it's an exciting industry we're in, and it's exciting times here at AR 100 Armor.